Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make tiny improvements to your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon. Hello and welcome to this episode. Today I have a really fun one planned. We are going to be talking about things that are none of your business. Um, Before we launch into the episode, I did want to just give a quick plug for the soft launch of my course that I released last week. So I came out with a course, it's called the Laser Focused Solopreneur, and I have been working on it for a few months, and the goal was to launch it March 1st, which I'm still going to, but I finished two weeks early and instead of just kind of sitting in this two week gap and letting it sit there, I decided to release it anyway and I'm releasing it with kind of a bonus. Like if you buy before the official March 1st launch date, you will also get, in addition to the course, a 30 minute focus session with me. So that does two things. That allows um, you to get all of the goodness out of the course and ask questions and follow-ups, but it also gives me the benefit of getting some early feedback uh, because I really want to make this as useful and helpful to all of you solopreneurs as possible. So if you are interested in the course, you can click the link in the show notes and it takes you to like a free preview and the sales page, but I'm also doing a full episode next week. So that will be the first week of March. That was the original launch date And, and it's going to talk about all the details, so how the course came about, who it's for, um, what you get, all, all the goodness. But for today, we're gonna put that on hold. If you are excited and you want to buy early, the link is for you in the show notes. All right, another fun piece of business that I get to announce is that I am excited to host a giveaway with my friend Lily from the Creative Heart Studio. So she just came out with these awesome bags and aprons for balloon decor. If you haven't seen them yet, I did a full like review and kind of showed the products on my Instagram page, and she has offered to give away a bag and an apron to a listener. So I'm really excited. So that's a, I mean, that's like a huge giveaway. I, I'm so excited that she offered to do that. Uh, and the way to enter is going to be to leave a review on the podcast. So wherever you listen, it can be um, like Apple Podcasts, it can be on Facebook, it can be wherever you listen to the podcast, go ahead and leave a review. Uh, I hope it's a good one. I don't think I can actually ask you to leave a good review. That's maybe legal, but... (laughs) I don't actually know. So make sure that your review either has your name or your company name, some way that I can identify you when we pull a winner. And we are going to do that the first Friday in March, which is going to be the fourth. So you have a couple weeks to get in on that giveaway. All right, with that, let's take a quick break and then we'll get into the episode. Are you facing some competition? Hi, I'm Jeff from Asset Lab, and we help balloon decor businesses stand out online and generate more leads, more phone calls, and more contact form submissions through great online marketing. We can help you with your website, social media, advertising, Google search, you name it. We've helped balloon decor businesses with it. Learn more about us at assetlab.us. All right, let's get into this episode and start talking about things that are none of your business. Now, the emphasis is going to be on your business. They're none of your business. So I know it sounds like none of your business means don't be nosy. You guys know I love being nosy. That's why I started a podcast. I love asking questions. But I think sometimes we think we know the answers to those questions before we ask them. We think we know another balloon business's financial picture based on what we see on Instagram. We think we know how happy they are based on uh, how they look, how they sound. We think we know how successful they are based on how many jobs they have and how many staff they have. So like we get in our own way and we make things our business. We think that other people's businesses should be reflected in our business and it's just not true. It's it's just not true. A lot of the times we are inventing things that just make us feel 
worse about ourselves. So today I just want to go through a list of some of those things that I have been guilty of comparing myself to. Um, a couple things I've learned along the way doing balloons that, you know, sometimes you're not getting the whole picture. Sometimes people lead you to believe they're a little bit more successful than they maybe are. So we're going to talk about some of those categories. Before we jump into some of these bullet points, I also just want to clarify that like there is not a fixed number of jobs. There's not a fixed number of um, sales or a fixed amount of money in the balloon industry. So like if someone across the country is making a ton of money, that doesn't mean that there's less for you. Or if someone has a bunch of employees, that doesn't mean that there's like less for you. I feel like sometimes we invent this like spectrum or um, this limit, like <laughs> that's like a mean girl's quote, the limit does not exist. Um, it doesn't, what other people are doing, it has literally no bearing on your business. So if someone is doing a million dollars in sales, First of all, it doesn't mean that your $100,000 is piddly. It doesn't mean that your $20,000 is piddly. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you also can't make a million dollars if that's what you want. Like, it's not this fixed amount of money that we're all grabbing at. Like, that just, that doesn't exist in our industry. There's always more money. There's always more clients. There's always more birthdays. So first of all, the comparison should stop right there. But of course, we know it doesn't because we all meet people at conventions that seem wildly successful. We all go on Instagram and see these people's businesses seem to just flourish like overnight. And meanwhile, you're like struggling to <laughs> get a job. Um, it is really, really difficult right now because I don't think there's ever been a time where we've been able to see so much of other people's businesses. But what we see isn't the whole picture. So some of those missing pieces, let's start with finances. Obviously, that is the big one. We love to compare our finances. First of all, the number people love to share is their sales number. And I'm guilty of that too. I happily share that I did $100,000 in sales this year. I am very proud of that. Um, I know people who do $800,000 or a million dollars in sales a year. The thing though that we need to think about is how much of that actually goes in your pocket? If I do $100,000 in sales, but I spend $150,000 to keep my business going, we've got a big problem. Um, and likewise, you know, someone who does a million dollars, you don't know, they might be spending $900,000 to keep their business afloat and pay for all their employees and their materials and they're actually not making very much at all. Now, I, you know, the people who are up at the million, they're making a lot of money. They have figured it out to get to that size. But I feel like there's a lot of people who are in that, you know, 50,000 to $300,000 range. And that seems like a big range, but you just don't have any idea what they are bringing home. So just don't assume that because someone is doing more in sales than you that they are more successful. Um, along the same vein, you have no idea what kind of debt they have. Maybe they're doing $200,000 in sales in their first year, but maybe they front loaded that with $300,000 in debt. Maybe they bought a van, maybe they bought all their equipment, maybe they bought a warehouse, like maybe they did all of that right out the gate instead of slowly building up to that over time. Neither one of those is right or wrong. I'm just saying it's apples and oranges. So like if you're comparing your slow bootstrap model to someone who just went and got a loan and bought everything it's so different and it's like I see those people pop up on Instagram all the time it's like wow how do they have that much success right away well maybe they bought it maybe they it's a buyable experience to get a business loan you know in the long run you're going to be paying a little bit more in interest but that is a different way of doing business and it's it's really really tricky if you are going to be comparing yourself to someone who is doing something completely different so you don't know about other people's finances the other big part of the picture is what their partner's income is like um if you are a single mother it's going to be a lot more difficult to start your business than if you are married to a six-figure earner with a pension and insurance and paid time off like that is a whole other part of the puzzle that I don't think people openly share again because they don't need to and because it's none of our business but in not knowing the full picture we get into trouble when we think we know the whole picture so don't compare yourself to anybody else all right another 
thing that we love to dwell on is staff. How many staff people do they have? Um, and I think that's kind of what we talk about when we say like a big business, like size big. I feel like often means how many people work for you. But again, you don't know the whole picture. So if you see someone who's just starting out and they already have like a team of people, you have no idea what that what that looks like. I I maintain a very small business look and approach. But I could also flip that and say that I have a team of, let me think, one, two, three, four. I could say I have a team of four. None of them are my employees. None of them are full time. None of them actually like work for me. They're all subcontractors. But depending on how you want to spin that, I could say that we have a robust team of five employees. Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't it doesn't change my numbers at the end of the day. It just changes the perception that I'm giving to other people. So if you see people on Instagram loading up with their team of, you know, 10 people, you do not know. They could be paying them all 50 bucks cash to come and help on that install. Like you just don't know and it doesn't matter. It doesn't impact your business. Okay, another thing that I don't think we really talk about a lot in our industry is like the long the long term plan. What is the plan? Because it looks very different to build and grow a sustainable business that doesn't make you want to kill yourself versus a quick hustle to scale really quickly so that you could do a couple of things. You could step out completely. Like maybe people are just hustling to grow these massive businesses so that they can actually take a step back. Or other people I know are building big businesses so that they can sell them or that they can retire in a few years. And the point being, looking at the lifespan of a five-year business versus a 25-year business is very, very different. How you grow, how sustainable you are, um, how much drive you have. It's, it's much more attainable to hustle as hard as you can for five years versus 25 years. You're going to burn out. So the length of someone's business, like the long-term plan, that is also a part of the puzzle that we really, we don't have. And again, we don't need to have. It's none of our business. All right, here is, ugh, this is kind of the rough one. We don't know if people are struggling. Um, there are people that look happy and pretty and put together online, even when you meet them in person, and at the end of the day, they're just not. So I'm not going to dwell on this one, but just know that if you are following someone online and you're thinking to yourself like, oh, why is it just so easy for them? It's probably not. Their kids probably make them <laughs> frustrated too. They are probably checking their bank account. They are wondering what their next move is. They are struggling with hiring people too. They are getting negative reviews. They are they are experience, experiencing everything that you are. Um, so it's not fair to just think that, you know, that person, everything looks great online. I really go out of my way to kind of show some of those those low points I like to make fun of myself but I also have this platform this kind of safe zone where I know I'm talking to all balloon people I don't think the average person is going to do that on their business account they're not going to brag about the fact that they got a one-star review um, so how would you really know if someone is struggling so you just have to assume that what you see online it's the highlights it's it's really the best of the best it's not the the grind the ins and outs of things that are going wrong and things that just won't won't get finished and you know people are just as confused and overwhelmed as you might be as I am sometimes Okay, here's another one where we love to um, assume that people are more successful than we are, and that is how booked up or busy they are. So first of all, I have been guilty of this one saying, I'm totally booked. Well, what does that mean? For me, it's like two or three jobs a weekend. So if I say like the month of March is booked, that could mean that I have nine jobs. Um, it could mean that I have 30 jobs. It could mean that I have 100 jobs. The point is, you don't know what it means when I say like, I'm fully booked, but we love to feel bad about ourselves when we see that other people are booking up really fast. Another thing is like, I don't have a minimum, so I book quick. Other people maybe have like a $500 minimum and they might not book up, but they're probably making more money than I do, so you just don't know what that means. Um, the other thing is this perception of being really busy. So 
you all know my entire Instagram is is a lie. Like my follower count, it got super inflated when I was doing reels and some of them went viral. Um, I've been on Instagram for a really long time. So I have built a big follower account. Many of them are not customers. Many of them are other balloon people and that's fine with me. But I am very transparent about the fact that like follower count on Instagram is not the end all be all. Um, But also the photos. Like, I post photos that are very old. Like, I post Valentine's Day photos from three years ago because I had a great Valentine's Day shoot. I usually don't have any jobs on Valentine's Day. But if you don't know that, you would look at my stories and my posts and be like, oh, my gosh, she had three. No, I've had, like, three over three years. And I just post those because they fit the theme. Um, I have my posts auto-scheduled. So I don't even know what is posting tomorrow, but I just know something is. And that's not a job that I'm doing tomorrow. That's a job I probably did nine months ago. So I recycle content like crazy because my point of view is that my Instagram, it is just a portfolio. So when people find it, they see the best of the best. And I just want it to be current and fresh enough so people know that I'm an active business. I am not putting very much thought or time into growing my Instagram following. But If you didn't know better, you would think that I am posting these big jobs every single day and I give the impression that I'm really, really busy. But again, just because you post it doesn't mean you just completed that job. Some people post the same job for like two weeks straight and it's a great marketing tactic, but it has no bearing on how busy or successful they are. So don't get in your own head if you think other people have more content, if they're doing more. this is kind of a tangent. You also don't know what they're charging for those jobs. Some of the most impressive photos on my Instagram were styled shoots, meaning I didn't make any money from them. Um, There are other times where I made a ton of money and the photos are just like helium balloons. They're not impressive. Um, One of my biggest jobs ever, it photographed really poorly because it was in six different ballrooms and it was mostly centerpieces. I I hardly ever post pictures of that installation, even though it was a $10,000 job because it just doesn't photograph well. So sometimes all of these little, all of these little posts are just, are really misleading. All right. The other, the last thing, the, um, The thing that we don't know about other businesses, and again, it's none of our business, is how they got started. Um, Sometimes businesses look like they pop up overnight and they're immediately successful. First of all, we talked about loans. Maybe they just have a ton of money to be able to do that. Um, Another thing is a lot of people come into these businesses as like a family business, like they're inheriting something from their parents that they either had a balloon business or maybe your mom was a florist and balloons were like a tiny part of what they did, but now you're taking it over and you're bringing it into this, um, you know, this century and you're getting all digital and all of a sudden there's this brand new business that isn't actually new at all. They've just rebranded or they've moved into balloons or um, they just started with a huge pile of money. All of those things are totally okay, but they give the perception of like this instant success. And that's probably not the case. Um, Another area that you just can't be sure about is like, what did they do before? Um, You know, for, for me, I've had, I had two businesses before I moved into balloons and those businesses worked well with balloons so I started doing balloons with a pretty big client list like I was a face painter most recently so that folded really well into the balloons I actually kind of segued the balloons into face painting for a while and then stopped face painting so I didn't start from zero I started with a nice network of people who could also use balloons so a lot of people come into balloons from like the event planning industry and they just realize like there's money in balloons and it's faster and simpler than planning the full event so they just transition into balloons but like they have this killer client list and network they're not starting from zero so again anyone who seems like an overnight success I will say like sometimes that does happen sometimes people just gain traction and they're really good and they just take off Um, but in general balloons are hard and it takes a long time to build up that that repeat business and that client list so don't get distracted if you see someone seemingly um, you know outdoing you especially if they're not even close to you that's kind of the thing I wanted to end on is like if you are getting distracted from people who aren't even in your town 
that is nothing but a waste of your time because it is none of your business. It doesn't impact your business at all. I am in Wisconsin and I don't know what it is about Australia, but like their balloons are crazy down there. And I constantly get in my own head about like, well, how are they doing these insane installations? And they're doing things on boats and like, this is crazy. But you know what's crazy? Comparing my Wisconsin business to an Australian business, like that makes no sense at all. Um, so this is a little bit of a different discussion if you are comparing to like direct competition, someone who's in your town, someone who is competing for jobs with you. But most of the time, I think a lot of the comparison game that we play is in our own heads and it's on Instagram or it's on Facebook or it's meeting someone at a convention and all of a sudden you're like, wow, like they're so much more successful than I am. I must suck. No, you don't. You're just in your own head and you don't have the whole picture. And again, you don't need the whole picture. We're not detectives here. We don't need to know about other people's business. Just don't let your idea of how someone's doing derail you. I see it happen all the time. I see people get really you know, they just beat themselves up about it. They feel like they should be more successful. They feel like they should have more jobs. They should be making more money. And at the end of the day, it really only matters within your own business. Okay, let's take a quick break and then I have one final thought to share before we go. Hey friends, I wanted to take a second to tell you about Having a Party Wholesale. They are my preferred balloon distributor and if you're not following them on Instagram, you're missing out. They post tons of free education for the balloon industry in addition to updates on products that are coming in stock or new releases and they really, really take care of us as balloon decorators. I had someone reach out the other day and ask if I order on Amazon and I almost passed out. If you are ordering your balloons on Amazon, you are wasting so much money. You need a reputable balloon distributor to take you to that next level. So check out Having a Party Wholesale in the show notes wherever you're listening. All right, before we go this week, I just want to encourage you that the next time you're on Instagram or you're in a Facebook group and those little thoughts start creeping into your head about how did they sell a $20,000 job? Or how do they have so many employees? How are they so busy? How did they afford a van already? Just let yourself off the hook and tell yourself, it's none of my business and, and use that as a positive mantra. It's none of my business. The other thing though is you have to figure out what is your business? What is the stuff you care about? What are the things that you are going to measure to feel successful? What are the things that you want to accomplish to feel proud. For me, it's money in the bank and quality of life. Those are the two most important things in my business. I want to be able to send my daughter to a really nice preschool. I want to be able to get my nails done. I want to be confident that I'm not going to overdraft in any of my accounts. I want to love decorating parties and be excited about my small business. But at the same time, I also want to be able to take a weekend off and go on a vacation and not feel stressed all the time. So for me, it comes down to that quality of life. And because I'm so focused on those things, I'm okay that I don't have a team. I'm okay that I don't have a storefront. I'm okay that I'm never going to be a million dollar business. I don't, I don't want those things truly because I know that it would have to be a very different business model and it would shake up um, kind of this easy coasting lifestyle that I've made for myself. So if any of those things resonate with you, if you want to build a similar business to what I have, you might want to check out that laser focused solopreneur course. It outlines that entire framework of how I've been able to build a business that works for me. And if you're like, gross, I don't want anything like that. That's good too, because at least you know, at least you know what type of business you want to build. We get in trouble when we start comparing our business to other people's businesses when they're nothing alike. So take some time this week to figure out what you really do want for your business, what it can bring you, uh, and don't get in your own head. And remember when you do, it's none of your business. Just let yourself off the hook from having to be concerned with other people's businesses. All right, I will see you next week and we are going to do a deep dive into the laser focused framework course. That wraps up this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I tried to keep it bright and light in a few minutes or less. I'll talk to you next time. 
For more information about any of the resources or courses mentioned in today's show, please head to thebrightballoon.com or check the show notes wherever you're listening.